What's up everybody, my name is Tim Russwick and today I want to talk about sandboxing, what it is, why it's important, and how it can help you build better games. So uh, this is something that like has come up repeatedly with my longer projects. A lot of the games that I built, in fact the more, majority of games that I've made have been smaller projects, week long, weekend, stuff like that, some game jam stuff. Uh, but when it comes to longer projects, anything that I've worked on for long enough I feel like there is a benefit to something called sandboxing. And what sandboxing is, is basically building out this, this whole type of like engine. Um, if you think of an actual sandbox where you can kind of sit down on the sandbox and build stuff, build castles and whatever. Um, and it basically works like by building things, building pieces and building tools. I'm currently working on a platformer called Philophobia and uh, the platformer, has different enemy types. It has different things you can interact with. It has different mechanics. Uh, and one of the, the problems that I'm running into is that when I create something new, when I create a new enemy type, um, I have to figure out how it fits into the world and how it interacts with everything. Um, the initial enemy types were all sandboxed before the game was started. So I had certain enemy types and that, that I had built before I built any levels. So I had this little dude that follows you around as a heart. He kind of flies. I had this uh, little dude that you touch and then um, he's in, he becomes an enemy and then you can't touch him again. I had a couple different enemies sandboxed out, basically built before I had any levels or before I had any kind of content, but I had the whole kind of engine structure of all the stuff. I had all the code written. I had the, the art pieces. So when it came to time to actually build levels, I could drag and drop these little things into the level and just kind of test the levels that way and test them all that way. Um, a lot of people, they, they go the opposite route of this and they'll just kind of build stuff as they go along. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but it can, it can have problems later on, especially with longer projects, because if you build stuff as you're going, sometimes you don't build stuff that fits in with the rest of the stuff, or sometimes it's, it breaks other things, or sometimes it doesn't quite interact well with all the stuff. Whereas if you start with the sandbox and you kind of start with what you have, then you can build stuff out of it and you can kind of like go into content mode basically, because you have all the, the puzzle pieces. Um, and I think that's kind of the difference between sandboxing or not sandboxing is if you don't sandbox stuff, you're building the puzzle pieces as you go, fitting this big gigantic puzzle together. If you're sandboxing stuff ahead of time, you're kind of building out all the puzzle pieces so you can just sit down and make levels or make content or do whatever you need to do to put all those pieces together to make a game. And the more, the longer into a project that I get, the more I see the benefit of this. And I, I know AAA companies do this all the time because they have a separate sandbox team that just works on the stuff that works, the grenade explosions, the way the guns feel and all that stuff. And then they give it to the content team and the content actually takes all the sandbox stuff and builds it into the content. And there's some collaboration there, right? Like the content guys say, hey, I need I need this big explosion to work or whatever when in this certain event and the sandbox guys go ahead and build it. So there's some crossover there. It's not necessarily all upfront, but I'm saying there is a benefit to building everything out in sandboxes so that you can kind of understand the scope of where everything's at. One of the approaches that I've taken now, because I'm on the final stages, the final worlds of, of my game, because it's broken into four different kind of worlds. And um, there are certain enemy types and certain mechanic interactions and stuff uh, for those enemy types or for those worlds. And I'm sandboxing out each individual world uh, to make sure that I uh, they have all the enemy types. I understand where they all fit together. I understand how they interact together. I understand the progression over time, how I'm going to introduce them to players. And by getting all that done, I can just basically go into content mode and just make levels over and over again um, because they're, they're one screen levels. So they're not, they're not super complicated to make. But once I have all the pieces, I can go, kind of go in and, and make that all. Sandboxing is also pretty fun because I think you can add um, a little bit of polish, um, a little bit of like juice to your stuff and make sure it feels good before you actually start building a game around it. Um, I've made this mistake multiple times where I build a game around a mechanic or a player controller or a movement system that's just not that fun. And when you do that, you risk a lot of stuff because one, if you go back and change it later, you built levels around the jump height, you built levels around the speed, you built levels around all the different things that your character has. And if you change that, you have to go back and change all the different levels. But on top of that, 
even if you don't change the core mechanics and stuff, you change the height of the character or something, it might affect uh, the hallways, it might affect like different layers in different places. Um, I just changed the movement system in my game three months from launch, which is a horrible mistake that you should never do. Uh, but one of the reasons why is because I didn't properly sandbox all this stuff um, ahead of time and I didn't make sure it all fit together. And so I'm dealing with a lot of different pieces that kind of are all over the place, really. And um, I wish I would have sandboxed it better. So for the next project, I'm definitely going to sit down and figure out what we got there. It's not always doable for all projects. It's not always, you can't always sandbox everything. But having the bulk of stuff ready to kind of uh, drag and drop as your tool set that you can kind of put in and use as content pieces and, and pieces to the puzzle, I think is really beneficial. And I think it's something that maybe you should try out. So let me know your thoughts on it. Leave them down below. Uh, have you ever done sandboxing before in your game? Have you ever built stuff before you build content for it? Um, let me know your thoughts. Leave them down below. My name is Tim Rosswick, and I will see you again tomorrow.